I don't want to sound like a Thanksgiving dinner, but do you ever plan on getting married? If the answer is yes, congratulations in advance. If the answer is no, you're definitely not alone. Well, I mean, technically, you, you're alone, but you're not alone in the idea of opting out of marriage. In fact, in the UK, Japan, China, and right here in the US, the rate of marriage has been declining in record numbers. That's also led to a decline on the rate of births. This is even more true among the middle and working class. The thriving center of psychology surveyed Gen Z and millennials and found that two in five people thought that marriage was an outdated tradition. What was interesting was that even though a lot of people think it's outdated, 83% still hope to be married one day. It looks like people deep down are still yearning for that lifelong commitment to spend the rest of their lives with one person. So, why aren't they tying the knot? Well, 73% of those people said that it's too expensive to get married in the current economy. And we're not just talking about the wedding, although that is part of it. According to the website The Knot, the average wedding in the US is about $30,000. A survey by LendEDU showed that one third of couples went into some kind of debt, whether it was credit cards, personal loans, or home equity loans in order to finance their wedding or part of their wedding. The average amount borrowed was almost $12,000. And that's just day one of marriage. Imagine being a newlywed and already being $12,000 in the hole on day one. But this trend of declining marriages isn't just in the United States. About 89% of the world's population are located in countries with declining marriage rates. The OECD is the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development. They have about 38 countries, most of which are considered high-income economies and rank highly in the Human Development Index. According to their data, in 1970, they recorded about 7 to 10 marriages per 1,000 people. Over the next 25 years, that fell to 5 to 7. In 2019, that number declined to 4 to 6. I'm curious what those numbers will look like 20 years from now with all the socioeconomic issues surrounding marriage that doesn't seem like they're changing anytime soon. Some countries are worried about the economic implications because of the declining birth rate that's correlated with the falling marriage rate. Japan, for example, has the world's third largest economy and also the world's oldest population. This is becoming an economic crisis because Japan had fewer than 800,000 births in 2022. That's the lowest on record since 1899 when it began tracking births and it's the seventh year in a row it's seen a decline. Without a new workforce to replace the outgoing one, governments around the world will see a decline in workers, aka income taxpayers, aka people who fund said governments. In China, it's expected that by the year 2050, the working population will be reduced by 10% while seeing the number of people that reach retirement age double. Here in the US, the rate of marriage has dropped by 60% since the 1970s, although the age of first-time marriages has actually increased, meaning those that are in their first marriages are seeing lower divorce rates than in years past. What's important to note here is that the rate of marriage among higher income couples has actually remained about the same for the last 40 years. According to the Federal Reserve, married couples have a much higher median net worth than unmarried couples who live together or people who are single. But that doesn't mean getting married is a good financial investment. It seems to be more that people getting married are already earning higher wages before deciding to tie the knot. Marriage isn't just about finding the right person, but also about being in the right financial situation because it comes with a lot of expenses. Marriage usually leads to buying a home and later buying a bigger home and getting a bigger car 
due to a growing family. I'm going to try to navigate this next section as best I can because I don't want to turn this into some men versus women bash session. There's plenty of that type of content on the internet and this channel focuses more on the current economy and how it affects you. That said, bear with me because I know a lot of people are thinking about all the social impacts on marriage and the relationships today. And while that does play a part, the main reason was, is, and always will be good old fashioned money. In the 1960s, we had a cultural shift that increased female participation in the workforce. Back then, it was common to raise a family on one income. And according to the Pew Research Center, about 70% of households were single income households with the father being the only one who was employed. As women started entering the workforce, the number of single income households fell to 31%, while dual income households rose to about 60%. And in this economy, a lot of people are doing it out of necessity. Going off the latest data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the median wage for a full-time worker right now is a little over $57,000. $57,000 in a country where the median home price is $440,000 and the new normal for a car payment is $700. That doesn't include student loans, which is the third biggest bill borrowers have, food, utilities, gas, insurance, the list of bills goes on and on. It's hard to get married in this economy and even harder to afford having children. Data from the Brookings Institution shows it will cost over $310,000 for the average middle income family to raise two children to the age of 17 birth rates in the U.S. were steadily declining before the pandemic and in 2020 dropped 4%, but then ticked back up by 1% in 2021. That was the first increase since 2014. Professor of Economics Phil Levine says that because of the unusual circumstances of the pandemic, that it would be a mistake to rely on those years for fertility rates and thinks the long-term trend we saw before 2020 of birth rates falling is going to continue. Researchers at the Pew Research Center show that women are having children later in life, and when that happens, they tend to have less children overall. In fact, the birth rate of women in their late 30s and early 40s has gone up over the last decade. People in this age range tend to have more earning potential and thus are in a better position to raise a family. So overall, it seems that the catch-22 here is poor economic conditions are keeping people from getting married and having kids, which will lead to more bad economic conditions. Well, that is until we're all wiped out by AI and robots. Until then, hopefully, we'll see the economy improve and homes become more affordable. Something I talked about in my last video that you can watch here.